This is a Huygens chain weight drive. It uses this falling weight to power a rotary motion. But this is not any old weight drive. It has a trick up its sleeve. By turning the ratchet, you can raise the falling weight up during operation. Even when I'm turning, the weight is still powering the machine. This makes this weight drive continuous. It can continuously power a rotary motion as long as you input new power into the system through the ratchet. If I match my input speed with the speed of the falling weight, the weight can stand still in the middle of the air while still powering the rotary motion of the machine. The smaller weight is there for the tension of the chain, so it's located here on the right side. Normally you would use a chain with sprockets because a chain can't slip over the sprocket, but my string kept on slipping over my pulleys, so I added some tape inside out to add friction and that seemed to work. Here's the Lego ratchet in close-up action and here's the whole base of the whole body. I'm blown away by, <laughs> by the Huygens chain drive. I discovered it through this video, which is covering a telescope, where a Huygens chain weight drive is driving a telescope to track stars across the sky. And immediately when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, a continuous weight drive? I have to look into this. But why am I looking into a continuous weight drive? Well, my last video presented an experiment where I tried a weight drive as an idea to power my Marble Machine 3. And it turned out in these measurements that the weight drive can play 7.6 times tighter music than the next best option. And admittedly in this Lego experiment I used a Lego flywheel, so probably a real flywheel will play much tighter, but in either case a weight drive seems to be a really interesting option for making a tight Marble Machine 3. But a big machine like Marble Machine 3 will need tons of weights falling from like five meters high just in order for me to be able to play a song with three minutes music and I was like ah this is going to be really tough either the weight has to be like 10 tons or I need like 10 meters fall height but with the Huygen continuous chain drive all of those problems goes away I can play any length music I want and we can keep the weight really close to the ground making center of gravity really low on the machine and we can even make the weight stand still. We can even have a large weight just hanging 20 centimeter over the floor, which would be safer if something would happen. So yeah, the Hagen continuous chain drive is just one of those awesome mechanical inventions that turns my brain on fire. A quick note, if you lift the weight up too fast, the added power of accelerating the weight upwards will add to the downwards pressure the weight is putting into the system. So the best case scenario is to move the ratchet in time with the weight so it's standing still. 300 years ago, Christian Huygens, a Dutch mathematician, astronomer and inventor, used this weight drive in his early clocks to maintain power throughout operation. And to visualize the problem I'm trying to solve here, let's look at the Marble Machine 3 as a balance scale. So on the left side of the scale, we have the power input. And on the right side of the scale, we have the power usage, which is all the friction in the system. So what I'm trying to do is to make a system where we can balance the two sides out, because when we can balance the two sides, the music is tight. If the power input is a random number, let's say 100, but the power usage is only 80, we have 20 points of power more than we need and the machine will accelerate. And vice versa, if the power usage suddenly increases, the speed will decrease. So when I'm hand cranking a system, every second the power input value is changing. So we have 100, 99, 103, 94, 106, 99, 100, 102. So imagine trying to balance that on the other side. 
that is pretty difficult. So now we can contrast that to a weight drive that in theory adds a constant power input. So it's constantly adding just 100 to the left side and we can just make sure that the right side uses exactly 100 and the music will be tight. How can we balance the power usage, the right side of the scale to exactly 100? To balance the power usage in the system, we have to understand the difference between a flywheel and a governor. A flywheel can help smooth out the power input. As you can see in the graph here, when I'm cranking the machine at around 100, the flywheel is doing a great job at keeping the red curve closer to 100. It smoothens out the power, making the music much more tight. But the flywheel doesn't know that 100 is our target BPM. So if I start to accelerate, like you can see the blue line is doing here in the middle, and I go up to 130, 140, the flywheel will accelerate with me, only with a bit of latency. A governor, on the other hand, can add friction to the system while the speed reaches a certain value. So in theory, a governor can be added to cap the top speed of a system, like we can see used in this gramophone here. So the user can set the place for the friction disk at the desired speed, and the added friction will keep the speed at a certain level. In theory, I think a very good system would be to have a falling weight on the left side of the balancing scale, adding a constant power input, and then a flywheel to smooth out variations in power usage and power input. And on top of that, adding a governor to fine tune the value to the specific value we want. With the understanding I have today, I think this would be the easiest system to balance. That doesn't mean that this is the best solution for the Mar Machine 3, but it's a first principle theoretical solution that I think holds up pretty well. How would we play different music tempos? Well, the simplest option would be to alter how much input power we're putting on the left side of the scale. So by removing or adding weights, the system will speed up and slow down in, in a very predictable way. We can then fine tune the BPM, adding more or less friction from the governor. We could perhaps also use different gearing to achieve different speeds. I haven't done a lot of thinking about that yet. And then there's a nuanced question. How balanced does the scale need to be? How tight does the music need to be? And I will try to prototype all these concepts as soon as possible to get out of the theoretical realm and really see what's needed. Perhaps a weight drive is only marginally tighter than a crank drive. Then perhaps it's not worth it. For everyone thinking all this is overkill, let me just remind you that I've done two prototypes that both failed, painfully failed. I haven't really communicated how painful it was to fail with the Marble Machine X. The feeling that I was letting everyone down, having to cancel the Marble Machine X project was not fun. The marble issues were all solvable, but I realized that the machine was stuck in a local maxima where it wouldn't be able to play music as tight as I wanted. So what I'm doing now is that I'm trying to make sure that Marble Machine 3 will not get stuck in a local maxima of not being able to play tight music where I would get tired of the machine and not wanting to use it at all. Right now, there are four key takeaways from all this. First of all, a weight drive is a constant power input. Secondly, a Hagen chain setup allows us to have a weight hanging still in the air and we can play continuous music. And, and thirdly, keep this visualization of the balance scale in mind. This is really the best way to understand the Marble Machine 3. If the scale is balanced across time, the music will be tight. As you can tell, I'm having so much fun with this right now. So yeah, four. Find yourself someone who looks at you the way Martin looks at a Huygen drive.